So we spent a lot of time covering limits, and while limits themselves are interesting, ultimately we wanted to build up the idea of a derivative. So what is a derivative, you ask? Well, for starters, it's a limit. Well, what type of limit? Well, as its name may indicate, it's a limit that is derived from our original function. So the derivative of f of x, denoted f prime of x, is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. You'll notice it is a limit of a quotient. And in the numerator, we have a difference here, the difference of f of x plus h minus f of h. And in the denominator, we also have a difference. h is basically x plus h minus x. So looking at this graph here, we can see that we have the point, we're considering the point x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h. The x distance separating those points is, well, it's x plus h minus x, which is just h. And the y difference separating those points is f of x plus h minus f of x. If we take the ratio of those two differences, or really those two distances, we get f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And what would happen as we make h smaller and smaller? We will approach this derivative. So let's say this were the point x plus h comma f of x plus h. So Instead of this point, we're, we're going to be considering this point here. Well, then our ratio would be this distance here. This would be x, and this would be our new, I'll call it x plus h2 here. And this y distance, this, this is here f of x plus h2. The y distance would be this here. And if we took the ratio, we will get we we would get uh, we get a new we would get a new uh, ratio here f of x plus h minus f of x over h and if we as we let x plus h get closer and closer to x that's well that's really the same thing as letting h get closer and closer to zero this ratio will approach the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x minus of f of x plus h minus f of x over h which is also the derivative of f at x and you might be thinking well these ratios look a lot like slopes and if you're thinking that you're absolutely right in fact if this if um we're considering the slope if we're considering the ratio of uh f of x plus h minus f of x to h and this is this is our point x plus h comma f of x plus h that ratio is a slope of lo the line through these two points so the slope of the line through x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h now if we're considering x plus h comma f of x plus h to be this point we'll call it x plus h2 comma f of x plus h2 then the ratio f of x plus h minus f of x to h is going to be the slope of the line through these two points and hopefully it should be fairly intuitive that as we let h get closer and closer to zero or alternatively as we let x plus h get closer and closer to x the line through x and f of x is, and uh, x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h is really going to approach the line that's that's uh, tangent to the function right at x so that basically just cuts the function just at this or touches the function just at x comma f of x 
and the slope of this line is essentially what the derivative of f at x is. You may be wondering, well, what if we let h approach 0 from the left? So would the, would the slope of the line in the limit as h approaches 0, would that still be the slope of this tangent line? Well, let's see. So let's say, let's say x plus h were here. Well, then the line, so here's, here's x. The, li the line will be this line here. Now let's say x plus h were here. Then the line that we'd be considering the slope of would be this line here. Let's say, oops, let's say x plus h were here. Then the line we'd be considering the slope of would be here. And you can kind of see that as we let h get closer and closer to zero, even coming in from negative values of h, that the line we'll be considering the slope of will be the line tangent to f of x at, at x. So we now know the limit definition of the derivative of f of x at a general point x. But what is it at a specific point x equal to a? Well, if we go back to the graph and call x a and x plus h, if we call it x, and x plus h2, if we call that, say, x2. So instead of considering x f of x, we'll be considering a f of a. And instead of x plus h comma f of x, we'll be considering x comma f of x. And this, this is just another possible point x. And its corresponding y coordinate is f of x2. So the limit as h approaches 0 will really become a limit as x approaches this point a. And the difference h will become x minus a. And this vertical distance, which was originally f of x plus h minus f of x, will become f of x minus f of a. So we'll have the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And this is basically the limit definition of a derivative at a particular point x equal to a. And remember here that x can approach a from either the left or the right. Well, having gone through the pedantic definition of the derivative, why is the derivative even useful? Well, without derivatives, we can only consider slopes of lines. And if we wanted to consider curves, then we could only compute the average rate of change of the curve over a period of time. For example, here, that rate of change would be given by r, the rate of change between of the function between x1 and x2 be given by r sub f r sub x1 comma x2 is f of x2 minus f of x1 or f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. But the derivative would actually allow us to compute the instantaneous rate of change of the function at any particular point, say at x1. So instead of answering the question, well, how does this function change between x1 and x2, we can ask, we can really answer the question, what would happen, how does, how is this function changing instantaneously at the point x1 comma f of x1? I think a very useful way to think about the derivative as an operator that takes as its input a function f of x and spits out a slope generator f prime of x. And this slope generator will calculate the slope 
at x comma f of x for it'll calculate the slope at any given value of x for any function f of x to make this a little bit more concrete let's say our function f of x is sine of x well the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x so at any given point x the derivative the instantaneous slope of the function at the point x comma sine of x will be given by cosine of x so let's say we're interested in finding the slope slope of sine of x at x equals pi over 3 well we can consider it the derivative as an operator that'll that'll enable us to do that it'll spit out cosine of x so we know that the slope will be given by cosine of pi over 3 so the function the derivative operator takes the function as its input and spits out a slope generating function and if you consider a particular value of x and you, and you want the slope at a particular value of, of the original function at a particular value of x well the derivative evaluated at that value of x will give you the slope of the original function and we'll see later that there's some simple formulas that easily allow us to compute the instantaneous rates of change of all the functions we've seen in our algebra and pre-calculus classes so stay tuned <laughs>